So I just want to show you guys, um, I cl just cleaned my two diamond rings. This is my engagement slash wedding ring. And then on this hand, I have this little um, thing that John got me for Valentine's Day many years ago. And um, I was watching uh, Hallmark Channel's Home and Family show, and they were talking about different ways to clean different kinds of jewelry. And for diamonds, it was so simple, I just had to give it a shot because I've been looking at my at my diamonds and going, ugh, they don't look very good. And you, all you do is take some kind of clear alcohol, not like rubbing alcohol, but like vodka or rum or, or um, you know, just some kind of clear alcohol. Um, I just filled up a, I just put a, you know, maybe about a third of a shot glass and I dropped the rings in and then you let it sit in there for an hour. And when you're done, there's no using a toothbrush. There's no nothing because the, um, the alcohol just eats away at all the dirt and grime and everything that's on there. And then you just rinse it off and dry it. And, and there you go. So sorry about that glare that's on there, but um, but anyway, you can see that it's just nice and sparkly. Both of them are. So I'm going to try some of their other different tips that they had for, for silver. It was baking soda and boiling water and, um, that you put in an aluminum foil lined baking dish. And I think the aluminum foil has something to do with how it cleans silver. And then with, what was the other with gold? It was, um, well, I think it was, well, vinegar was involved. I can't really remember. But anyway, so I just thought I would show you because it really worked nicely. And it was no effort. I just dropped it in the um, little glass and let it sit for an hour and then rinsed it off. So I just finished cleaning these necklaces. These are all, this is all costume jewelry. Um, most of them, well... Some of them I got from Charming Charlie. I mean, they're just inexpensive um, metals, not like gold plated or silver plated. They're just absolutely fake. <laughs> um, and so what you do with this is you take a mixture of one part white vinegar and three parts warm water, and then you put in your jewelry and let it sit for 15 minutes. Now make sure that you're not putting in something, um, you know, like you're not gonna soak, um, like a topaz or a pearl. Those have to be in a, a totally different kind of thing because it can be, just be too harsh on certain kinds of things. So, so this is just absolute costume jewelry that's kind of got build up from dirt and skin oils and stuff like that. So you let it sit for 15 minutes and then you use a toothbrush and give it a good scrub all over even on the chain and then rinse it off uh, this was a brand new toothbrush and um, when I was finished with each piece this center part that was white was just black um, it's still I even washed it with soap and it's still um, discolored from that so um, you just use kind of a gentle toothbrush and you don't want to use one that you've used um, to brush your teeth because you're not going to use it on your teeth <laughs> anymore but also um, you don't want to get residue from toothpaste and stuff like that on your jewelry either anyway um, this one is the necklace I was wearing today and this was looking, this is what kind of inspired me to want to clean it, is that this was just looking so, like, almost just brownish gray. And now, you know, it's got like a rose gold tinge to it, which is nice. So, um, so they're all just really nice and turned out really well. It's funny that she doesn't bark. Chloe put um, Vanessa bark did everything.
Hey, don't bite your bed. Don't put your bed. Hey. Hi you guys, it's Tuesday the 23rd and I'm heading up to the grocery store just to pick up a few things. Um, I wanted to give you a little bit of an update. Monica is in her kennel right now while I, I mean in her crate while I go to the store. If you're following her channel and you saw that video where she just cried and shrieked and sounded some something somewhere between an infant like a human infant and a dying animal <laughs> um, she actually has only done that twice and so unless she's done it when I've left her in her crate but I don't think so uh, this morning I put her in there while I was taking a shower and she did a little bit of a you know kind of a like that but she didn't throw a hissy fit um, anyway I, at first I think the the crate was just freaked her out she'd never been penned up like that and so it, it just freaked her out but now she sleeps in that crate every night and so now she she'll actually walk past it and go in or I'll walk over to her and I'll just say go in your house and she'll go in um, I think what she really hates is knowing that I'm there and that she's stuck in you know in the crate so uh, she did that the second night when I put her in the crate she did that and it was unbelievable I was laying there in bed trying to just you know tell her to you know it's okay it's okay and <laughs> I would have to stop and just laugh because it sounded so funny and then the other time she did it was that time I filmed it which was when I was um, gonna take a shower but she hasn't um, she hasn't done it since so she's been really good she um, we one or the other of us sets an alarm to to get her up about three and a half hours after we go to bed they're supposed to be able to hold their pee um, for one hour longer than the number of months old they are so she's um, she's 10 weeks so two and a half months and so three and a half hours and then she actually holds it longer after that um, we put her back in the cage and then she usually will hold it until we wake up in the morning so somewhere around 5 or 5 30 or whatever so she's pretty good she's had some accidents in the house but not too many I'm really good about taking her out after she plays after she sleeps and after she eats and then a few other times just for the heck of it and then I take her outside a few times a day and 
uh, get her to play. So sometimes I just walk around the property and she, you know, has to run to keep up with me even though I'm walking slowly. She's so little. And so that kind of tires her out. And then sometimes Chad goes out and she likes to, to, you know, bounce around him and try to get him to play with her. He lets her come closer now, but still, but if she gets too close, he smacks her. Um, <clears throat> and then sometimes she'll chase a ball and, you know, so there's just some things we try to do to tire her out, but she does sleep a lot. She probably sleeps, I don't know, 16, 17 hours a day. So she was sleeping when I realized I needed to go to the grocery store. So I had to wake her up to take her into the crate. But anyway, the first two nights, um, she was restless and I was very tired the next day, but now she's, you know, basically letting us sleep except for the fact that, you know, we set an alarm to let her outside <clears throat> in the middle of the night, but she's doing pretty well. The cats are doing pretty well with her. They are realizing that she's not going to attack them. They just think she's a little bit too crazy. So they're sort of like, eh, I don't know about you. Chad is super intrigued by her. So wants to be friends with her. Um, I, I believe, but he's just not quite sure, you know, like she's like, like a, she's like a roller coaster. She's, she's fun, but a little bit scary. So, um, I'm, I'm sure that Chad and and Monica are going to be super good friends. Not exactly sure how Mary will end up being. Um, I, I just know Chad will because he's been wanting to have, um, you know, Mary play with him and Mary's kind of a fuddy duddy. So, um, so she doesn't want to, so I know they'll be friends, but it'll be interesting to see how it all pans out. But it's only been, um, it was one week ago yesterday that we got her and so it's it's amazing I've already taught her to sit um, so she'll do it like I use little treats and now I'm teaching her to, to uh, shake which I call hold my hand and she doesn't really get that yet but I just started this morning so my whole thing is just to get her to be a super trained dog and when I say that not necessarily like that a dog that can do tons of tricks, although I intend for her to be able to do a ton of tricks. My whole goal is that she's just really obedient and always looking to us for direction. Um, so far, she's just been really, 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 really good. So, um, you know, I, um, I'm officially in retirement. I got my first pension check at the beginning of January. <clears throat> had a little screw up with with insurance um, apparently I'm listed as not covered and um, I don't know I also there was some screw up and screw ups with the paperwork that was submitted by um, the university where they put down my date of retirement as 12 29 18 um, you know and it was 17 <laughs> Uh, so that may have screwed something up with the insurance, but I tried to refill a prescription yesterday and they were going to charge me $800 for it, which was the red flag that something was going on. So, uh, they, I have, there's somebody at NAU who's looking into it for me. Um, I haven't had any freelance work to do. I touched base today with one of my editors. Normally I'll, I'll touch base with like every one of them all at one time and then I get overloaded. <clears throat> and I'm getting more in my pension checks than I thought, so um, I'm not in a real big rush to get back to work. Plus, with Monica, it's just there's a lot of distractions, so it would be hard for me to focus right now. Anyway, so I did contact my editor, and she said that there is a project that is coming up, and she's already recommended me for writing uh, at least one piece, if not a couple of pieces of this project. And she said she'd get back with me with details and a timeline and all that kind of stuff. So I don't have any idea when that's going to be. Um, I don't know that I want to contact another, I'll probably give it another week to see if she gets back with me before I contact another editor. I'm just so good at getting overlapping projects and then I'm up to my eyeballs in work and I'm sort of enjoying kind of getting into the this whole thing of just not having to do a lot of stuff all the time which is shocking um yeah 
so um, that's pretty much it for um, for right now I just thought I would catch you up I know the last vlog was pretty much all Monica and didn't really talk to you guys too much about her and how she was doing but she is a sweet little girl um, Sunday we went up to Flagstaff to do worship at our old church <clears throat> and um, so my mom babysat and that was really nice she got along well with my mom's dog and she um, only had one accident in the house um, and it was on hard floor not on the carpet so that was good and um, my mom is in love with her so, <laughs> so that was fun fun too and Monica's just a trooper you know I just do you know I just we've just been having her do all kinds of stuff we can't have her get around unvaccinated dogs or dogs that are allowed to kind of roam around like in our area our neighbors some of them their dogs are always off leash and kind of go wherever they want and even though they're vaccinated ugh, right light um, even though they're vaccinated if they walk across any dog do residue um, from like a dog that has parvo or distemper um, then if it's on their feet and Monica comes in contact with it, it could just be really bad so she's got uh, her next vaccination is in is it in a week and then she gets another one three weeks after that and then another one I don't know two or three weeks after that so she's got a while before we'll be able to freely take her around other dogs and particularly dogs we don't know so um, I can't take her on walks or anything like that of course she's just so tiny right now it'd be I don't want to you know it just seems like a walk would be a lot for her plus she just gets exhausted walking around our house outside <laughs> because she's so teeny but I wanted to show you I'm making some dog biscuits here those are the raw ones they haven't been cooked I have some in the oven it comes from this cookbook called the, um, the small dogs doggy bone cookbook and um, it comes with a little cookie cutter right here and it's and you can just store it right in there by sticking it in there um, anyway I used to always cook uh, or make uh, dog biscuits for Vanessa and Chloe. They have all different kinds in here. Um, Cinnabone and Bark BQ, which is a barbecue. Um, this is what I made tonight, is Veggie Bite. And it has, sorry about that, whole wheat flour, oatmeal, diced celery. Um, op optionally, optionally, you can put in diced red bell peppers, shredded carrots, it calls for unsalted sunflower kernels. I did not have those, so I left that out. Um, one and a quarter cup of water and uh, three tablespoons of olive oil. Um, so that was really simple to make, and you just cook it for 30 minutes. This is basically a whole wheat. There are peanut butter treats, and this is a diet bone. Um, this one has uh, chicken broth in it, so it's paw licking chicken, garlic and cheese. Trick or treat, Santa paws. There's one that's a, a birthday treat and um, this one is a like a breath freshener, one that has mint in it. I've made most all of these for Vanessa and Chloe over the years. Super easy to make and um, because they're baked, they, you know, they're dry and so they store pretty nicely. Um, some of them have, you know, the one I made didn't have any milk or egg in it. Some of them do call for that. Some of them don't. 
So it just depends, but it's kind of fun. Now, you know, do you want to run out and buy this book? Maybe, but you can also look on Pinterest for, um, for homemade dog bone dog biscuit recipes, and they have all kinds of stuff. Um, I have another um, dog biscuit cookbook. It's called The Short, Short Tales and Treats from the Three Dog Bakery, which I guess actually was or maybe still is. Um, a bakery of dog treats and this one doesn't come with a little um, cookie cutter but you can buy them I mean they have they have cookie cutters that are shaped like dog bones if that means anything to you but there's all different kinds of dog treats in this one I've made several of these as well um, if I can find these online I will link them in the space below so if you are interested in looking for either one of these cookbooks then um, just look in the space below the video. So the first batch is out of the oven. They're still pretty hot, um, but they're, they'll be nice and crunchy when they cool down. And I guess the, the um, big test will be if Monica eats them. I will, as soon as they cool down, I'll give one to her and I will show you if she likes them or not. All right, so Monica's being sleepy, but um, let's see if I can tempt her. What do you think of that? Oh, what is that? You want it? What do you think? So far, so good. So this just has whole wheat, flour, diced celery, red bell peppers, shredded carrots, and oh, there's some oatmeal, a little bit of oatmeal, and then water and a few tablespoons of olive oil, and she clearly likes it, and it's all natural, and we know exactly what's in it, and know that it's healthy for it, and clearly she likes this. Recipe, puppy approved. Hey guys, it's Monday, January 29th. I have taken two weeks off of walking and decided I would get out here this morning. It's cold, it's like 35 I think when I left the house. Um, but uh, I'm only making it about a mile and a half just cause um, I started to feel my foot again, feeling a little bit sore and I figured you know, I've been off my feet for two weeks. I don't need to push it and set myself back. So I'm hoping I can walk like three days this week and um, that slowly I'll get back into it again. I'm not training for any particular race. I'm really just taking the time to um, continue to heal. Um, would love to be able to take Monica on a little walk, but of course she's very little and she hasn't had her um, puppy series of vaccines finished yet. She has her second one next week and or no Friday and then uh, I think she has two more rounds to get after that before she can freely be out in the world without the risk of um, you know picking up parvo or distemper or anything like that so Anyway, it's a beautiful morning. It felt good to walk. I was just listening to some worship music on Pandora and um, it's a beautiful morning.
Tonight I'm making a recipe with zoodles, which are zucchini noodles. If you don't have a spiralizer, it looks like this. You need to get one. They're really inexpensive. Just one size, one side is larger than the other, and you just you can use it for a variety of vegetables. But um, I always use it for zucchini. Um, it doesn't. I'm not going to tell you that. It tastes just like pasta or has the same texture as pasta, but you certainly really would not know it was zucchini. Um, so anyway, this particular uh, recipe, right now what I'm doing is just cooking up the zoodles, which takes about five minutes. There's some garlic and red pepper flakes. And then in the oven, I'm roasting artichoke hearts that have salt, pepper, and some garlic powder on them and then when this is all when the artichokes are finished I'm gonna put them in here with some shredded Parmesan cheese and um, some uh, lemon juice and it's they're really good you guys and just look up spiralized or spiralizer or in spiralized uh, recipes and they'll have all kinds of really amazing recipes so that you can, um, you know, get some of the carbs out and use some more vegetables in your diet. Really, really good.